Hey scholars, welcome to chapter 2-2 when we're looking at more of the chemistry of this chapter, what is matter? And so we're gonna, that's our question, obviously matter consists of elements and compounds which are made up of atoms, ions, and molecules. We're going to define some of those terms today, just a little refresher on some of your past chemistry that you've learned before, and let's get right into it today. So a few definitions to know is what is matter? It has mass and takes up space. Uh, simple definition of matter. Elements, uh, their unique properties. Uh, cannot be broken down chemically into any other basic uh, substance. There's nothing other basic rather than elements. Um, examples, helium, hydrogen, oxygen, things like that. Compounds are, are more uh, two or more different elements bonded together with some type of bond. Um, hydrogen, covalent, ionic bonds uh, together in a fixed proportion, uh, in a certain proportion that makes them sp a specific compound. And so some of the uh, elements that we study the most in environmental science are obviously hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, sodium, calcium, lead, mercury, arsenic, and uranium. Um, so those are our main types of elements that we look at when we'll talk about throughout the semester in AP Environmental Science. So now we get to atoms, ions, and molecules, kind of some definitions and things of those. What is atomic theory? Well, atomic theory is that uh, elements are made up of even smaller units, which is an atom, and all things made up of atoms is like one of the smallest units possible. That's the atomic theory. So atomic particles are protons with positive charges, neutrons with you know, no charge uh, within the nucleus, and then negatively charged electrons that are orbiting the nucleus. Uh, that's what an atom is made up of. So mass number is the, is the protons plus the neutrons. And an isotope, what is that? Hopefully you remember this from back in the day in chemistry. Isotopes uh, have the same atomic number, elements have the same atomic number, but they differ in mass numbers. And usually, specifically, they differ in the number of neutrons. So our, our three basic ones are carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. And as we get higher in those numbers, is they're adding one more uh, neutron on to into that nucleus. So that's what an isotope is overall, basic, uh, basic uh, chemistry here. Um, ions, they are ones that gain or they're uh, uh, molecules that gain or lose electrons um, and they form ionic compounds and we'll talk about some of the major ones that we deal with uh, mainly in AP Environmental Science. And then the pH, the pH scale is measured of acidity. Um, if it has um, hydrogen ions, then it is uh, more acidic. If it has hydroxide um, ions, then it is uh, more basic. So that's the simple uh, the little form on, on pH as well as um, ions. So hopefully this is just kind of, again, a refresher uh, for you guys. All right, so molecules. Those, again, are two, made up of two or more atoms of the same or different elements held together by ke chemical bonds. Uh, some examples, water is H2O, sodium chloride, NaCl. So just some simple ones to remember, just thinking about chemical formulas back in your, in your chemistry days. This is just looking at model of carbon-12 atom. Obviously, you see six the protons are in red, neutrons are in blue, and this electron cloud uh, represents six electrons there. So here are some of the important um, ions that we that we'll talk about throughout this semester. Again, those are uh, positive or negatively charged uh, molecules. Uh, hydrogen ion so because of uh, pH, sodium ion, calcium ion, aluminum ion, ammonium ion, chloride ion, um, hydroxide, nitrate, sulfate, and phosphate. Again, a lot of those we'll talk about, at least those last three, specifically with the nutrient cycles. Um, as well as maybe a little bit of sodium and hydrogen in there as well. So that's, that's, those, are the main, those are the main ions that we'll talk about as far as chemistry goes. So this is one ion that we'll talk about, um, uh, loss of uh, nitrate from a deforested watershed. And this was our case study um, that we talked about uh, last uh, video and just showing you the different, uh, be able to read graphs. So that's one thing that you have to do on the AP exam is be able to read graphs and interpret data. So obviously this is in blue. This is the undisturbed control watershed, pretty con consistent throughout. This is um, nitrate concentration. Obviously you can see uh, about in, in this is in 19, about uh, between 1966, 1967, we had a huge peak um, in, uh, in nitrate concentration. And this is the disturbed lab experimental watershed there. Obviously a lot of that, all that nitrate in the soil leached out into the water and you can see a huge increase or influx. Now eventually it kind of levels out because it's obvious it's a stream, it moves, it dilutes, so it obviously went down a little bit after time. Maybe some of those, maybe some of the soil in this area um, had some grasses, mosses growing on it, maybe kind of held in some of that nutrients uh, being nitrate again, but that's kind of the interpretive data for that uh, case study. So here's some other compounds that are important in environmental science, uh, sodium chloride, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, nitric oxide, um, nitrous oxide, nitric acid, methane gas, glow, uh, with greenhouse gas, glucose, water, hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, sulfuric acid, and ammonia 
are some of those. And again, most of the ones, the chemicals that we'll talk about, especially these ones, uh, the carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, um, sulfur cycle, ammonia we'll deal with with the nitrogen cycle. Um, most of these have to do with the, um, the, the, the cycles, the nutrient cycles. Methane gas is, is more um, with the carbon cycle, I guess, but as well as, um, you know, green, we'll talk about that global warming. Glucose photosynthesis providing energy. We look at that when we look at energy. Um, then obviously water is throughout this entire um, entire uh, semester. Organic compounds uh, are the chemicals of life. We have inorganic compounds and organic compounds. And organic compounds have at least two carbon atoms. And inorganic do not. That's basically the gist of it. If they have more, two or more carbon atoms, it's organic. Um, hydrocarbons, chlorinated hydrocarbons, simple carbohydrates, all the macromolecules you guys learn way back in the day in biology. You know, uh, you know, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acid, lipids, all of those um, are, are our major organic compounds. So just a refresher on what organic versus inorganic means. Um, this is about review of biology a little bit. So we kind of hit some chemistry. Now let's talk about some biology. Um, matter comes to life through genes, chromosomes, and cells. Cells are the basic unit and structure of life. Um, genes are sequences of nucleotides. You know, the, uh, the A's, T's, C's, and G's, those nitrogen bases matching up um, was along with the deoxyribose sugar. And uh, as well as the, uh, the phosphate groups, and uh, with that makes up DNA. Count chromosomes are composed of many genes, um, and that is kind of those are tightly packed uh, information, uh, basically DNA and genes all wrapped up into chromosomes. So uh, here's kind of the, the layout of it all, going from the human body all the way down to the smallest little bit of DNA. We start off with the human body it contains trillions of cells. Each human cell contains a nucleus. Within that nucleus, you have chromosomes. Uh, each chromosome has um, you know, a specific pair, and then we have each chromosome containing long DNA molecules, you know, the helix, then all the segments of that DNA are genes. So those are kind of the gist of going from the hierarchy from most complex to more specific. Uh, matter occurs in various forms. This is even go back to physical science, where we're hitting them all today. Uh, solid, liquid, and gas. Um, uh, those are just our main three that we'll talk about in, in different forms. Um, we have some different types of matter. There's high quality matter, low quality matter. I'm not sure if you hit this in physical science or not, but this is a good refresher for you. High quality matter is highly concentrated, found usually near the Earth's surface, is a really good potential as a resource. So if we found oil that was really, really close to the surface in a huge uh, reserve of it under, right underneath the, the soil layer, then that would be really, really good. It's, it's easy to mine, easy to get, easy to extract, and easy to make money off of. So that's high quality matter. Low quality matter would be at lower concentrations usually found either deep underground or dispersed in an ocean or an atmosphere where all the particles are really spread out. Very hard to extract all that, in, at least without damaging the environment, as well as um, you know, actually getting a good source or a concentration of it because it is kind of dispersed in such small parts. A little potential for a resource there. All right. Um, uh, the last thing are just examples of different uh, differences in matter quality. Higher quality would be a solid. Lower quality would be a gas. The particles are more spread out. Uh, salt is in a higher quality sol a solution of salt and water because it's kind of spread out. Again, lower quality. Coal in a hard mass chunk form. Coal-fired power plant emissions. So the smoke that's coming off of it, that does have coal particles in it, but very, very hard to use again as a resource. Gasoline in liquid form. Uh, again, automobile emissions would be lower quality. Aluminum can, a soda can, is a high quality. Al aluminum ore, which has other materials and elements in it, would be lower quality. So there's a couple examples for you. All right, that ends this section. Next time we'll talk about two, three, talk matter chains. See you guys next week.